Hello, welcome to another Toneless Landscape oil painting demonstration. This is your painter in residence. I'm Francis McCarthy, or you can call me Mike, or you can call me Michael, or you can call me Mud. It's all good. Or you can call me Francis. Someone the other day said, oh, you, how come you go by M. Francis, but I can't call you Francis? I said, you can call me Francis. You can call me anything you like. Either way, I'm still the same friendly local neighborhood landscape painter. <laughs> Not always that friendly, but we try and keep it friendly. We try and keep it all friendly and nice here on old YouTube. Uh, today is Wednesday, um, May 2nd. Where, well, it's May 2nd here in New Zealand. We tend to be a day ahead of uh, people in the States. So, and this probably won't be going up until your May 2nd anyway, so don't worry about it. It'll be all right. Uh, this little painting I'm bringing you, I painted it last month in March. Uh, April, as far as paintings go, uh, the first half of the month, I was just doing massive amounts of board prep. <laughs> and very little painting. And uh, then the second half of the month, I've been embroiled in doing master studies. And uh, on one hand, I feel a little um, sort of bad about that. On the other, I was looking at Instagram. There's a uh, very, very talented painter there. Uh, and if you're into tonalism, uh, tip on over to Instagram. Make sure you follow him. His name is, I think it's Sean Kruger. And um, really good really really good and uh he had mentioned in one of his posts that um not not a lot was happening in the studio uh but he also mentioned that there's a certain ebb and flow and i think when you're a painter at a certain level you're aware of this ebb and flow or at least you if, if you're not aware of it you don't worry too much about when things are are ebbing and not flowing and you can't have 24 7 flow um, well, you can have it for 24-7, but not, not month after month after month. What's going to happen is there's going to, there's going to be breaks and lull periods, and or if you just keep going, what you'll probably do is just a bunch of crap. And um, not saying that this is a great justification for uh, those of you that might be a bit lazy and. Uh, just saying oh well I'm just ebbing you know yeah this is applying to people that are productive most of the time um, and even there like I uh, I wasn't necessarily aware that I was looking at an ebb but um, I do since I'm so intuitive with my process I generally I have a plan but I will modify it and if I don't actually feel like um, painting I'm into doing something else I'll do that and uh, might be board prep or I am painting right now I'm doing these past masters but that's a whole different thing than creating my own paintings when I, you create my own paintings um, I'm not trying to uh, make a study or a copy after someone else's work I'm creating my own work and um, it's a bit more engaged process and it's also um, well, far easier to fail at. I mean, if I'm making a study after someone else's work, they've already they've already succeeded. Otherwise, unless I was <laughs> making a copy after their bad paintings, <laughs> which would be silly. <laughs> it makes no sense. Uh, anyway, we're, we'll assume that the, the painting I'm making a study after is a masterpiece. And so what I'm really doing there is um, hacking their painting, reverse engineering it. It's a whole different mindset than creating a painting um, of my own um, from, you know, just sort of a reference photo or whatever. Now, this might not be very obvious to the person that's just being presented to the painting. In fact, how would they know much about the process that went into the painting at all? They're just seeing a painting. And in fact, if I don't tell them that it's a study after another artist, they'll just assume it's my work because I'm the one presenting the, the painting. And um, well, this is very, one reason it's very important to always credit uh, any artist that you're doing a, a study after, um, living or dead, I will say, because otherwise people are just assuming it's uh, your, bri <laughs> your brilliance. 
<laughs> well, this guy is amazingly great. Well, yeah, I'm making a copy uh, of one of the best landscape paintings ever done by one of the best landscape painters ever done. Doesn't mean that makes me uh, one of the best landscape painters that ever lived, you know. It just means that I'm pretty good at making uh, studies or copies after these masters and uh, it's it's appropriate and important that uh, they get credited and that people know and it's made very clear that this is a study after another artist and once I do that I'm heck I'm happy to sell that painting I'm happy to show it it's fine um, because uh, there's uh, several reasons why I might do a past master study. The, the number one reason and the most important is for my own education and improvement as a landscape painter. I think it's, it's become a really critical part of my, of my process. Also, it's a great thing to do when uh, you're in a bit of this ebb, you know. And I'd rather do this in an ebb situation than create a bunch of weak paintings. Um, that you know, I'm going to have to paint over the top of later. I just assume, especially now I've got my um, my board texturing process nailed. And uh, by the way, speaking of, there's a video up uh, about that uh, the the newer updated process, which is just a million times better than my original texture process. The problem with the original texture process, some people really like that texture, or that very heavy texture, but some people find it off-putting even if they like an image, and I don't need that. I don't need to compete with myself um, or create barriers to um, making a sale or having someone be able to approach my work. Um, especially when it might be a little off-putting to me. I'm looking at it as I'm walking by and I see the texture first and the painting second. That's not a great recipe for success. Uh, anyway, I, there is a video with my uh, new improved process. It's about three, maybe four weeks old. Um, and these ma past masters are the first paintings that I've done with the new process. And I have to say, I am just so thrilled uh, with the uh, surface quality and the workability of this uh, new texture that uh, I'm beside myself really and uh, you know uh, I could have been very proprietary with that I could have just kept it close to my chest and people could just wonder wow how does he do that you know but um, I've decided and more and more I'm deciding to just to be very open and share uh, what I've learned and what I know because let's face it you know you're going to uh, if you, you find the process interesting and you want to take a crack at it in your own work uh, your texture will come out different and not only that your painting's going to come out different there's a million things that go into a painting uh, just thousands and not maybe not a million but thousands and thousands of decisions that go into creating work of art it's it, at the end of the day unless you're purposefully going out to make a copy after someone else um, your painting is going to be a subjective expression of who you are and uh, it's going to be unique and original in that way um, so uh, I don't need to be somebody that uh, holds on to all their secrets and uh, although I have to say some of them are quite hard won and um, a lot of times I don't think people really appreciate the fact that um, there was a heck of a lot of uh, learning and study that went into um, a process that the learning a process or uh, accomplishing a process that uh, you know I then share that looks self-evident looks easy to people you know, it wasn't always easy to come up with let me tell you but uh, we'll put that in my biography okay my my uh, it'll, it'll be called uh, a landscape artist his long hard years of bitter struggle <laughs> It hasn't been that bitter, uh, and sometimes it's hard, but it's all fun at the end of the day. Anyway, getting close to the end, thank you for joining me today. And new subscribers, thank you so much for subscribing. I really, really appreciate that. And old subscribers, thanks for not unsubscribing. That's awesome. Just keep coming back, and I will keep the content coming. Uh, so look for a new video real soon. Meanwhile, please take good care and stay out of trouble.